And with that, it's off to the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, where we'll hand it over to our broadcasting team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. So this was the scene a moment ago. The Cardinals emerging from their tunnel, and we are ready for football as the cards get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And hello again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. And, Chuck, you take a look at this matchup. I don't know if it's going to be one in the trenches from the quarterbacks out, whatever. It's going to be a good game. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait to see the big fellas have an impact. We're always spotlighting those wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and even the defensive backs. But the big guys, I can't wait to see which one tilts the balance for their team. Ready for football in Arizona as Phil Dawson boots it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tampa Bay coming off that loss to New England last Thursday night. Jameis Winston brings him on the field. He threw for 334 in that game yardage-wise. And also for him, he hasn't thrown an interception since he threw three picks a couple of weeks ago. And all they keep telling him is if he takes care of the football and just lets his talent come to the front, Tampa Bay can be really dangerous. Now, in the game against New England, he was a little inconsistent through three quarters. Missed some targets, missed some open people. But in the fourth quarter, he was lights out. Had his team in a position to win the game. But, boy, their kicking woes got them throughout the game, didn't they? They did indeed, yeah. They were really struggling at the kicking position. And a first carry here for Charles Sims. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. Deshaun Jackson's game is speed and the deep ball, which means defenses have to kick coverages in his direction, often having to double team it. But he also has the ability to catch a short pass, make people miss, and turn that into a long gain as well. Hard to defend. He's looking forward to playing with Jameis Winston and getting the deep ball activated again in Tampa. Now Jameis on second down. Is incomplete. And here is the Cardinal defense. With the Cardinals, you get a package of pressure, and that's on any down, any distance. They always want more people near the line of scrimmage, more people attacking the quarterback. And then back behind that, they have a lot of different looks in their secondary, and they can't wait to get Tyron Matthew back on the field full time. He's their wild card because they can play him at safety or at corner. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the gun, Winston. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. The pro bowler, Patrick Peterson, back deep for Arizona. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Cards will take over, first and 10. Carson Palmer brings Arizona onto the field, and it was a tough offensive performance for this unit against Philadelphia last week. Palmer just under 300 yards and a touchdown, but this offense only mustered seven points. They've got plenty of playmakers at the wide receiver position. That's not the issue. We know they're led by Larry Fitzgerald, but J. Ron Brown and then uh, John Brown, I mean, they've got guys who can make plays downfield. But the loss of David Johnson at running back, his ability to run the football, his ability to catch it, that's hurt that team maybe even more than we could have ever anticipated. 
A first carry now for Adrian Peterson. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. And oh, this is Peterson remaining down on the ground and apparently in some pain. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. throw on second down. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Here's a starting lineup on offense for the Cardinals. And the big news on Tuesday, they traded for Adrian Peterson with David Johnson being out. I think that's a big-time trade for Arizona, who is desperate to get their running game going. Chris Johnson had been their leading ball carrier, averaging less than 30 yards per game. That's not going to cut it in a Bruce Arians offense. They need a ball carrier who can open up passing lanes by drawing some attention away from them. And guess what? Adrian Peterson wasn't going to get those kind of carries in New Orleans. You know he's eager to get to a place like Arizona and touch the football again. And this is going to be incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Now a man who made his NFL debut late last year, Matt Wilde, to punt it away. Adam Humphreys deep for Tampa Bay. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Taking it about the 16. 12 yards on the return that time, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So Tampa Bay taking over on offense in a second. You know, you mentioned earlier about the kicking woes that they've had. Roberto Aguayo last year, Nick Folk this year. It, the kicking game is just a big-time struggle for them right now, isn't it? It certainly is, and you do hear their head coach, Dirk Cutter, say all the time, that's their job. They're supposed to make kicks. So he doesn't alter his play calling. He doesn't alter his thinking or his strategy to try and work around a kicker. He puts them out there and says, that's your job. Go make it. But guess what? Those kickers have been letting down Tampa Bay for the last two seasons. 66% worst in the NFL on field goals since the start of last year. Jameis to throw it. Airing this one out for Evans. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, it doesn't take any great analysis. No jokes, partner, okay? All right, on this one. But we just know that we're going to see this as the game moves forward. There's going to be two guys on him on just about every snap. It's kind of a dare to throw his way, but they have to keep throwing his way. The benefits could be great. You throw it to a great receiver, he could come down with it anyway. Throwing again. Winston on second and ten. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Jackson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. Winston. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. 
You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it, and that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. This is Kerwin Williams, his first carry. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. Brendan Hargraves was drafted out of Florida to be a starting corner by Tampa Bay, and they believe not in just his physical abilities, but also his confidence. And that proved to be true in his rookie year. Didn't give up much space to some of the elite wide receivers in the NFL. Made plenty of plays on the football downfield and showed the ability to recover if ever beaten on a route. Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. From the shotgun, it's Palmer. And his throw here is incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target. And that'll make it third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Now Palmer, down around his goal line. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection, maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you wonder, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, it's Palmer. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. down carry it's Williams and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48 yard line two yards on the pickup there it'll be second and eight when the 4-3 defense is functioning really well you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him the guy playing the middle linebacker position the guy we call Mike that means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play On second down, Williams. They find some open field here. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. 
that's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Out of the gun, Palmer. It's caught, Nelson. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. After that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run here. This is Kadeem Carey. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. The Cardinals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. From the gun, it's Palmer. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Jermaine Gresham from six yards away. And the Cardinals have taken the early lead. It's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. This drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. And the Cardinals will go up seven to nothing. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it winds up at a touchdown for Arizona. Dawson now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. This is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about 
until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Starts with Sims. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Second down, Winston. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Buccaneer first, Winston to Bray. When we talk about Harvard, you know we're going to talk about academics. But in this case, let's talk about a big year Cameron Braid had in 2016, the tight end. Finished with 57 catches, 660 yards, and also eight scores. this one to midfield before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them. Providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Fresh set of downs here. Winston now from the 50. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. If you run an out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Second down throw for Winston. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 yards for number 11. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now they run with Sims. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. I thought it was a big deal when Arizona acquired Chandler Jones before the 2016 season. Some people called it a boom or bust trade. Which Chandler Jones would you get? I think the Cardinals liked what they saw in 2016. After four years with New England, really settling in as a Cardinal. And the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. To throw, Winston. And a catch right side by Evans. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. And a nice gain of 21 yards. For young quarterbacks, having that primary target's a big deal, and Mike Evans serves as that for Jameis Winston. Evans led the league in targets in 2016. And went after him a ton. He also was six in catches, fourth in yards, and tied for second in touchdowns. And played in his first Pro Bowl.
The first carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. <laughs> now Winston. Shakes off the sack. Able to get away. That's why he keeps the legs churning. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. He was waving his arms, wanted the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time we'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. <laughs> It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Robert Kimdichi in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. This Cardinals pass rush in 2016 got home 48 times. That's a pretty good number. A very good number. Led the league. Is it just because the dudes that they had or the scheme or both or what? It's always the dudes first, but their scheme, attacking, pressure, they'll continue to pile up the sacks. Roberto Aguayo out now for the Buccaneer field goal try. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Aguayo able to knock it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Roberto Aguayo following the made field goal set now to kick this one away. Here's Britton Golden now on the return. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. drive with Williams. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. A look up to the scoreboard as time has run out on this first quarter. 7-3 the score. We'll return after this message. You're watching the NFL, and it's right here on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Cardinals in possession of the football. They've got it second and six to start things out. Again, it's Williams, and he powers his way up past the 30. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. 
When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. The Cardinals on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. play action here on first down under a heavy rush and down he goes these strong safeties some people may not realize it it's really like an extra linebacker right it really is because they're hybrids half linebacker half defensive back the linebacker in him on that play emerged Second down, here's Palmer. And Gresham's got it over the middle. And he is knocked down from the side. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Cardinals on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This is third and nine. Off the play fake. Here's Palmer. And that is incomplete. Here's Matt Wild now as he'll punt it away for the second time. offensive unit back out on the field and they had a long drive last time but they had to settle for a field goal and I'm sure that's how it felt to them settling they probably should have gotten in the end zone yeah not out now joy right because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone but there are benefits to that type of a long drive your defense gets a chance to take a break adjust a little bit maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better so they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points yeah, maybe war down the other defense we'll see the drive begins here with Sims and they'll get him down up past the 15 they needed some breathing room he gave it to him 11 yards and a first down I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now huh had him pin back there deep give up that run can't be happy yeah whatever was whatever is in his mind right now we probably couldn't say over the air Sims. And Sims lost it. He lost the football. And the Cardinals have got it. Going the other way. And they are going to take possession of the football inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. <laughs> Getting 
and set to go again. Here's Carson Palmer heading back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Following the fumble recovery, it's Palmer. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. Jaron Brown, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. That was a difficult catch, and I admire the fact that he actually caught the football. Worked so hard to get his feet down in bounds. Tried to do the toe tap. Uh, my dad's an accomplished tap dancer. I'm not sure he would have gotten his feet in on that one. Is he really? By yeah, the way, that that he is. How about that? What about Young Davis? No, no, it did not. It did not cross. It didn't generation. carry over. No, it stopped right there. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. Well, after getting the ball in prime position to score after a fumble recovery, you think you're in a great spot. But the defense on the field is saying not so fast, and they've held firm on the first two plays. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Extra point try now for Dawson. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive, four plays. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. Dawson now to kick this one away. On the return now, it's Josh Huff. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. 
And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. to start the drive to Sims. He takes this for three to the 29. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. out of the gun. Winston gets it to the rookie from Penn State. It's Chris Godwin. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now Sims. He'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Now Jameis on second down. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Well, they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're usually going to pick up a holding call. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And now it's third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. The Bucks on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be a tough third and 18. Now Winston. He's going to let this one go deep. And that's caught inside the 35. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. Sims. And he'll get it down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Sims. 
And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And while there was no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. And they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. On third down, Winston. Well, this is caught by Jackson. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Deshaun Jackson, 30 yards. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. They haven't fully climbed the mountain, but they've started the ascent here with that score. I like that, right? They've, I think they've left base camp now, there okay? You go. So they've started to move their way up the mountain. Long way to go, but at least they know it's manageable. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. There have been points on the board. We just saw back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. I love it. I'm high-fiving our statistician, Christian McLeod. And you, you're, you're angry. You're a defensive guy. If you met one of my defensive coordinators, God rest his soul, I'm surprised he isn't in this booth right now wanting to really take you on. This is not football <laughs> the way he sees it. I he wants him. a good old-fashioned kicking game, defense, field position, and we're getting an up-and-down-the-field game here. I'll take him. Where's, where's his tombstone? <laughs> Boot Hill, baby. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They run again with Peterson. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Under four to play now. Clock running, third down. Operating from the gun. Palmer. And he's got Gresham. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. here on first down and he's going to be out of bounds 
but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. Charles Larry Fitzgerald, he's just a catch machine. Third player in NFL history with a reception in 200 straight games after a catch against Philadelphia last week. How about his durability, his efficiency, his dependability, and obviously just being extraordinary. 200 straight games, even though they lost at Philadelphia, two other guys have done that in NFL history. And I know you know who they are. Well, of course, Jerry Rice. We have to say him. And then Tony Gonzalez. So we've had another wide receiver and a tight end top of their craft. And the head coach reaches for the red flag, tosses it down on the field. He wants a challenge here. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Now the offense lining up first and 10. bootleg and he's going to be out of bounds down to the 25 another nice gain 13 yards that time and another first down I do have to admit I like it when it all comes together when the top part catching the football right whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it comes together with the legs in this case the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And the coach has decided to throw the red flag. He will challenge this play. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Again, it's Palmer. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And they'll be facing a third and 12. If you're a selfish player, and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. The Cardinals on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third down and 12. to throw again and this is going to be incomplete Brandon it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment but let, let's face it that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in yeah nice job to force the incompletion Here's Matt Wild now as he's on to punt for Arizona. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. 
Deshaun Jackson getting set to go again on offense. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. The first down throw for Winston. Going for the deep ball. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 45. So a minute 55 to go in the first half. More from the desert after this. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. First and ten, it's Palmer to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second down now after the pass completion. From the shotgun, it's Palmer. Man open left side is Brown. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Defense comes to the line now, first and ten. Right, right. right, right. 
To throw again, it's Palmer. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Second and ten. It's Palmer again. His throw caught at about the five. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Palmer to Brown and the Cardinals move the chains. second quarter they don't want to give up anything on the other side no not at all because if they don't it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score and right now they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half it's good and it's 21 10 So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it winds up at a touchdown for Arizona. Dawson now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Now a handoff here to his running back. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. So we reach halftime here in Glendale with the Cardinals on top. As we send you on to Orlando, we hook back up with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Cardinals are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Buccaneers didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now third and eight, Browns by himself here, and he ends up at their own 31-yard line before he stopped on the play. Continuing on the drive, Gresham's got nobody around him on the catch, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. Cardinals is up now by seven. Offense on the field now after the fumble. Carson Palmer on the money to Larry Fitzgerald, and this play goes for a score. The lead now at 11. Buccaneers with the ball midway through the second. Here a throw deep down the field is caught, and he'll make it out to the 34-yard line. Sticking with the same try, Jameis Winston able to get this one in the hands of Deshaun Jackson. And this play will go for six, closing
closing the gap to four. Now first and ten, here the defense will come up with the pick. It's Peterson making the pick and getting his defense off the field. Offense out now following the interception. Palmer is on point with the throw, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. The Cardinals go up by 11. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be fielded at the six. And they'll have good field position here as he's out of bounds up at about the 34-yard line. So here's the Cardinals offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They'll throw on first down here with Palmer. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. Now Palmer to throw. Airing this one out for Fitzgerald. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Brent Grimes. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Following the interception, Winston. And that is incomplete. The intended target was Chris Godwin, and that'll bring up second down. And fans, a quick reminder from the NFL, after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer, this year the NFL and the American Cancer Society, they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer. And you can learn more about the expanded Crucial Catch Initiative and access the Defender, a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. And I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because... Cancer affects us all in many different ways, and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. 
Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Third and short yardage, Winston. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And out will come the offense as they take over. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And some room to work. Adrian Peterson. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. It's a big run for AP. 42 yards. So a big run for AP. And when you look at the total package, everyone knows the level of player he's been in this league. But what really impresses you about Adrian Peterson? I have to go back to the nickname his father gave it, which is AD, which stands for all day because he never stopped morning, noon, night. And that's how he plays the game. No plays over. He always tries to finish things, and he thinks that each and every run he makes is gonna take him all the way to the end zone. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Again, Peterson. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football, and that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They go play action here on first down. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Troy Nicholas from 10 yards out. And the Cardinals will extend their lead. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving them up. Four touchdown passes, carving them up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. And the lead is up to 18 now. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. Dawson now to kick this one away. And 
And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And to give this time to the tailback. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Second down following the run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run. That good for 19 at a first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. They run left side. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They'll try to throw now. Winston. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. The Bucks on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 11. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's got Evans. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. The play fake to Sims. Now Winston. Looking left sideline incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time. And that'll bring up second down. And still needing 10 yards. Second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. 
But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. The Bucks on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. On play action, Winston. The swing pass caught. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Red zone opportunity. There's Sims on the run. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Charles Sims taking it in from two yards out. And the Bucs are able to cut in now to that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Getting set to go again, here's Carson Palmer heading back onto the field. He has been on his A game. We're in the third quarter. He's already in search of touchdown pass number five. He's played so well that it's hard for me to take my eyes off of him, even when he's not on the field. I keep finding my eyes finding him on the bench in between series, wondering what he's going to do next. This has been a blast to watch him play the position. Uh, he's been spectacular with those four touchdown passes. First down, it's Palmer. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, that gives us a second here to talk about the Chiefs 5-0. and Not only that, but nobody else in the AFC is 4-1. and Best record behind them, 3-2. and Obviously, they're talented. They've had a good record going for the last few seasons under head coach Andy Reid. But it's funny, one of our colleagues, Ryan, he had talked about watching Kansas City. He says, they just look like they're having fun out there. They have more fun than anyone else. The way they run offense with the exotic sets of plays that Andy Reid's calling, Travis Kelsey catching those shovel passes, they're doing option stuff with Alex Smith, and then the defense, they're just having a ball chasing it. I like it. Hunt, Hill, and Kelsey, those just seem like guys you want to hang out with. They, they are certainly having fun. do, yes, and they are undefeated. The Cardinals on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and eight. Out of the gun, Palmer. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I would dare say that these guys would have liked to have given their defense a little bit more rest since they gave up a touchdown their last time out. But alas, my man, that's not going to happen. Yep, they're going to have to grab those helmets, get right back out there.
Here's Matt Weil now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. down Winston Jackson's got it over the middle and they're able to get this one across the 35 that one good for 16 and the drive will continue the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Whether well, it's what we call an even front or an odd front, and an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to take this one down to about the 46-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Winston now. He sets to fire deep. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it, could not hold on through the end of the play. The Bucks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time they face a third and two. They'll run. It's Rodgers. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Defense able to get there. Swarm to the football. Zilch, zero, nada there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. Here's Brian Anger now. He's been terrific so far. Gets it away, and I don't think Peterson will get a chance to touch this one. Angling for the sideline. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself.
Now Palmer on first down. And Gresham's got it over the middle. And they'll get him down here at the 23. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On second down, here's Palmer. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The tight end, Jermaine Gresham, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. The Cardinals on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun. Palmer. And that is incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. Here's Matt Weil now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken at about the 14. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And possession will switch hands first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now they try the right side here. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. The Bucks on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and 10. From the gun, Winston. He's gonna let this go deep for Jackson. Incomplete, he had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Able to spin free. And now running right through it. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Cards will take over first and 10.
Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. First down, here's a run with Peterson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. It's Cardinal football. They're also out in front of the scoreboard as we get set for the fourth. First down, Palmer looking middle, and it's incomplete. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Throwing again. Palmer, rush coming, and he's taken down. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. Palmer gets him set, third and long for the Cardinals after the sack. Operating from the gun, Palmer. And he's got Fitzgerald. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Palmer. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. So 20 yards to go here on first down. A 10th carry now for Peterson. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And this will be incomplete. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be a tough third and 18. 
to throw is Palmer. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Matt Wild now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So out come the Bucks now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment, defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go, and he jumped a little bit too early. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Working out of the gun, Winston. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Charles Sims, the intended target, and it's second down. connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Jameis to throw it. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. Winston now to throw on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Frosty Rucker. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Jameis on second down. And his throw is incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making him play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. The Bucks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and 19. Now 
against it. And he comes back with one complete. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And the Cardinals have got it. Going the other way. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Ready. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Second down throw for Winston. And his pass incomplete. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Third and goal, Winston. And this is caught by Jackson for a Buccaneer touchdown. Deshaun Jackson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bucs capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. To throw, Winston. Floating one incomplete. They attempted to fade to the back corner of the end zone unsuccessfully. And I've been with you long enough, Brandon. I know it's not one of your favorite calls. Well, it's interesting. Before working with you, I always viewed that as you're just taking away space and you're trapping yourself in a corner. But you actually have told me they're trying to create space where space is not. Yeah, it's really a, it's a weird deal, isn't it? But you've got to just move that defender inside to create that separation and that little bit of space where there just isn't much. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, 
Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Throwing now, Palmer on first down. His throw incomplete. So second and ten here. To throw again. Palmer. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. him off. He's got a man complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. And now a first down following that long game. To throw again, it's Palmer. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end curling in the middle of the field so it's great sight lines for him and when they show their numbers back to the quarterback when they sit down right there that should be pitch and catch throwing again here Palmer oh no he lost the football and the Buccaneers have it I know when you're looking at the scoreboard clock, we're getting near the end of this game, but they were in what was really called four-minute offense, and that's practice, being taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. But bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it a costly turnover. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball's shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that would be considered a fumble. And a great spot to start this drive from here. And off comes to Peterson. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I'd say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. On 
On second down, Peterson. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. That good for 22 and a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. So they're operating in the red zone. They'll run with Peterson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Adrian Peterson taking it in from seven yards away. And the Cards use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Solid job up front, really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run, end result, six points. Touchdown. Now he's been a busy man, five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. This one taken from the seventh. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. It's caught, Humphreys. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Adam Humphreys, 74 yards. And the Bucs have made this a one-score game. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. And this is back to a five-point game. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, a long touchdown pass into the end zone.
The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. Focus now moves to Adrian Peterson. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Palmer to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. From the gun, it's Palmer. And that is incomplete. Here's Matt Wild now, as he's on to punt for Arizona. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. First down throw for Winston. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Chandler Jones coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Oh, that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you're facing intentional grounding call. Third and long for Winston. Complete. He finds Bray. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. A gain of 19 on third and 18. And that'll move the chains. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. 
Fresh set of downs here. To throw is Winston. He's going to let this go deep for Jackson. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. leading here late so a chance for the defense to really close out this game if they can halt the offense here's Winston that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down, Winston. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Robert Kimdichi in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, it gives him one more chance here on fourth down. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. And down by five, they've got to go for it here on fourth down. to throw fighting to stay upright and he's taken to the ground but he was pulled down by the face mask here come the flags and I believe this is going to be a first down Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Ready. Ready. 
He'll look to throw. And break. The tight end's got it. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now Jameis trying to hurry his crew to the line. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. That's going to set him back five yards. up third down. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. They'll look to throw. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, it gives him one more chance here on fourth down. Figuring they're going for it on fourth down. Remember, though, they do have all three timeouts, so even if they don't get it, all is not lost. Yeah, normally in this situation, when you're talking about having to go for it, everything is in this play. But as you noted, with those three timeouts, they actually have a little bit of a safety net. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. This is caught by Jackson. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. 26 yards on the pickup there. Throwing Winston. And it's good enough for Tampa Bay first. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Winston. That's complete. Middle of the field to Humphreys. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Clock now under 30 ticks and running. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Offense. So that one will be accepted. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Now Winston. He hits Rodgers in the flat. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Yeah. 
Here's Winston. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. They've got to burn the timeout, and they do, but a costly, costly sack. And now maybe just time for one final play. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Winston to throw. He's going to let it fly. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clenched it and caught it. Instead, it gives him one more chance here on fourth down. Now one more shot at it. Obviously, again, they've got to go for the end zone. Well, we've seen it happen before. How about Aaron Rodgers throughout his career? He seems to pull it off about every other week. But if I'm the defense, I'm rushing the quarterback and making him move away from his throwing arm. That makes it a little bit tougher to get it downfield. They're going to try for it on fourth. Winston stays out there. One last shot now for Winston. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Cardinals as we say so long from Glendale.